Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show a second alternative to stitching on a live leaf. Now in the first video, I showed my process for stitching on a live leaf. And while it's very beautiful, and the contrast between something nature made and something as human made as stitches is quite beautiful, the leaf starts to decay immediately, and so the project doesn't last. Not only that, but in order to preserve it, you need to keep it pressed flat in a book. So really, it's not very useful for slow stitchers. So I came up with alternatives to capture the beauty and the whimsical nature of stitching onto a leaf. In my first video, I showed how to use fabric and how to prepare it to give it body to make it resemble a leaf. In today's video, we're gonna use something as simple as a fake leaf, a silk flower, shall we say, from the craft store where you just stitch onto it, it'll resemble a leaf because that's what silk flowers do, and it's very effective for using in your stitching. It's a very practical way to stitch on a leaf. There are some ways to prep it, and I'll show you that in the video next. So in a previous video, we discussed stitching on a live leaf. Now, when the leaf was pristine and new and I stitched on it, it was beautiful and lush and green. And now it's almost a month old, and so I still have my stitching and it's still intact, but as you can see, the leaf has decayed and there's very little, if any, green on it, maybe just a teeny bit over here. It's still beautiful, but it's certainly not as striking and bold as it was originally. Now, the amount of decay and the color change really varies by leaf. This is another leaf, same variety, and it has a different color to it. It's a little bit older than this leaf, but yet it still has a little more green. This one, was pressed and created at the same time as this one, and it still maintains its green, and I keep these all pressed in a book. So I wanted to come up with alternative ways to capture the magic of stitching on a leaf, but not having that decay. I created a video where I used fabric that I cut out after starching it and creating a stitched leaf or a stitched faux leaf, and I'll link that below. But I have another way to do it. It's actually a big cheat of a method, but it is certainly fun and the results are pretty fantastic. So here I have fake leaves, silk leaves from the store that I stitched on. And I used a very similar procedure to both stitching on the leaf that was real and live and my fabric leaf from my previous video where I stitched through right onto some fabric interfacing here, some stabilizer. It's just tear away stabilizer, but I leave it on my leaf. And I use that if the particular leaf is very fine or very floppy. The stabilizer gives it some body. And then here is the leaf without stabilizer, but this fake leaf is a little more plasticky than silk. So you really judge the leaf that you're using. Now I'll, sh now I'll show you how to prepare it to go from start, like you'd get it off a little bush of leaves, to preparing it and stitching through it. And this is how I do it. So now the first thing that I wanna to do to prepare whatever leaf I'm going to stitch on is to prepare it. So a lot of times these fake leaves have a plastic backing, and this is the spine. This came from this leaf. Now, because I removed it, this leaf can go more flat as opposed to this one, which has body, and this just gives it the body, so it looks realistic when it's in use. But we're not gonna need that. So all I do is I take the leaf that I'm gonna stitch on, and I find the area where it's attached, and I'll just gently pull down all around to see how strong that hold is, that glue, that bond. And then I just gently pry some of the little veins away from the leaf. I like to get it started in areas. I always find that some areas it really sticks and that could co cause the leaf to tear and I don't want any tears in the leaf. So I just start by gently prying some of the veins. Now on this leaf, this green leaf is very thin and it is very fabric-like, like, like, uh, like a vinyl or a nylon. It doesn't feel like cotton, but it's still very forgiving, it bends and fluctuates. So I just wanna take it gently, and I just start to pull very carefully all these little veins. Any resist, I'll just go back to them later, or I'll come at it from a different angle. 
And so I have my leaf separate from the veins. And now if I press it in a book, it will go flat. So I start with the leaf from the bush, I pluck it off, and then I remove its little skeleton. So that worked very easily for that leaf. This leaf is a little bit stiffer, just the actual fabric that that leaf is, has a little more plastic quality, but I still use that same technique. I start by just prying out some of the veins and I just take it slow. I'm not trying to tear that leaf, but I do want to kind of remove some of the bonds that are holding it together. Each time I remove one of the bonds, it gets a little weaker overall, and it's more likely that I can salvage the leaf without its little skeleton on the back. So once I have that done on most of the areas, I can pull it closer to the thickest part of that vein and gently separate it. Again, I'm just trying to be very gentle, and not tear that leaf. Just do a little bit at a time. And then I have that skeleton removed. So now I have these essentially die cuts in the leaf shape with the various materials that it's made from. Either this little vinyl or this coated plastic. And now I'm ready to start stitching my leaf. Now for this one, I just stitched the actual areas where the veining would be. And as you can see on the back, I chose different colors of embroidery floss just to get that rainbow effect. The leaf itself is kind of a grayish white. And so I just chose soft pastel colors and I really th find that very effective. On this leaf, however, because it's so flimsy, I took some of that terrible stabilizer, cut it to the shape of my leaf, but only smaller, and I stitched through using embroidery floss through both the leaf and the stabilizer. So that's another method. However, we're gonna use this leaf today because it's a little thicker than this. So I have my thread. This is embroidery floss, but it's variegated. So every so often it starts to change color from a purple and blue to a pink to yellow and back through. So I've knotted my thread and now I just want to create a wandering line. To help make it a little easier, I'm going to start with my marker and just create that wandering line down the length of the leaf. And that's all I want to do. I could stitch lettering or a word or a name, but I just want to do that little line here. I'm just going to do a straight stitch. So I'll start at one end, create that little stitch, and just continue the length of that leaf. And as I stitch, because that thread changes color, the color will gradually change as my stitches progress. So I find that to be a very interesting effect. I'm making little stitches all the way following that line. And as you can see here, the blue is just starting to turn to purple. So in a few more stitches, we'll see the progression of that color. It goes from a bright blue to a more purpley blue before turning over to a purple. And it's a very fun effect. I can vary the length of my stitches, keeping them as close together as I want, because stitching through this little leaf is really like stitching through fabric. I don't have any of the perils of a live leaf where each stab is going to start to make it deteriorate. And it's not going to rust my needle because of the moisture that's inherently in the leaf. And if I want the look of a stitched leaf for my work, I'll have it when I'm all done here. So again, I just continue stitching that line and you can use any type of stitch you want. You could go back over it and thread stitches through these stitches 
it's really up to you. I think the simplest stitches are really the best for stitching on leaves because the leaf itself is a thing of beauty and the stitches just add a little element of something human to that nature made leaf. So I'll just continue. Right up the length of where I created my mark. You could do back stitches or split stitches or even stem stitches, any type of stitch that you like. I think it's just very interesting to have the stitches on the leaf. Now this is the second video that I've created that shows a variation on stitching onto a live leaf because I think that effect is beautiful but Sometimes it's not easy to find leaves or stitching through them is such a temporary art that it doesn't last very long and we saw the deterioration from that original leaf. So I'll continue almost at the end here and my thread is starting to change color again from the purple it's getting closer to changing to pink. Now this particular leaf has a lot of edges here that like to catch on to that embroidery floss. So that's slowing me down a bit, but it's not a very lengthy procedure, especially with something as simple as this straight stitch. Just have a few more stitches to go. And I'll just add in a little bit more. Maybe one more stitch here. And there I have my piece. I'm going to take an iron on the lowest setting possible just to get rid of that marker that I have. But there I have a little stitched leaf. I can always go back and add additional stitches, but I like that process. I'm very happy with this leaf and the way this came out. I have this one, it's just slightly different and I'll use this in my work as well. And then I have this one stitched onto this plain leaf with just a little bit of a feather look, which I can tack and use in my work. So that's how I stitch onto an artificial leaf. It's a great thing to use in your art journals or fabric books. You can even stitch words onto it, so it becomes kind of a memento, and it's very cute. There are some things you need to do to prepare that leaf, and I show you that in the video, and I hope you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.